guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, welcome back to the Blanket Fort for our second to last video on my favorite horror movies per decade. Okay, so today's snacks, we have the Yum Earth Gummy Bears. They're not bears, but gummy thingies again. Okay, we have Return of the Barley Chocolate Milk. We're not um, in a wine glass today, sadly. And because it's technically dinner time for me, but I'm eating like a slob these days, it's okay. Um, we have Artichoke. Oh, crap, what was it? Um, something else that's also green. Oh, Pesto Artichoke and Lemon Dip with pita chips. Grab a snack. Let's get started. Today we're going to do the 90s, the 2000s, and the 2010s. In honor of the um, 90s, I put on my Mulder It's Me sweater. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Sleepy Hollow from 1999 and directed by Tim Burton. So this one's not the scariest, I know, but it's one of the first movies that I saw as a kid that was like horror that I like really made me like horror. It was that was not very English and I think that the first movie um or the first version of Sleepy Hollow I saw was the um the animated Disney movie and not the live action one with Johnny Depp. So that one got got extra credit for getting me into horror. The second one I want to mention um, is Deep Blue Sea, released in 1999 and um, by, Ren Re oh my gosh, hold on, Rennie Harlan. Thank you. Oh my gosh. My brain sometimes, anyway, I think, okay, Jaws was what, from the 70s, I believe? I feel like in the 90s, like, peak horror, like, not peak horror, peak shark movies, or like, 90s and 20, 200, 2000, oh my god, <laughs> 90s and 2000s, in my opinion, were peak, like, shark movies, but, like, mediocre to not good shark movies, you know? I enjoy good shark movie. Listen, if it, like, even if it's a bad one, I'll probably watch it. I don't know what it is about shark movies, like, there's just something about it, you know? Anyway, but Deep Blue Sea was actually a really, 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 really good shark movie. It's one of the few, if not, like, I would say probably top five shark movies that's actually good in my books. Um, I heard that the second one is also really, really good. I've not seen it yet. Um, well, my roommate said that, so if it's not actually really, really good, I'm not taking responsibility for that. But the first one is, the third one I'm going to mention is... Uh, Silence of the Lambs in 1991 by Jonathan Dem. Oh my gosh, I freaking loved it. Hannibal Lecter is by far one of my favorite fictional serial killers in the history of history. Hannibal Lecter, Chucky, and Freddy Krueger are like the best. In my books, from my childhood anyway. So in one of the book clubs that I'm currently in, we read the um, Red Dragon. I already forgot what, we, what the name is. We read Red Dragon, which is the first book in the four book series, four book series to the Hannibal Lecter series. Um, so Silence of the Lambs is the second one. I think... Um, Hannibal is the third and then Hannibal Rising is the last one. I've seen Red Dragon the movie after I saw Silence of the Lambs. I've also read Red Dragon like earlier this year so naturally after Silence of the Lambs. Honestly, unfortunately, and I haven't read Silence of the Lambs yet, um, unfortunately Red Dragon was not, like it was good. Silence of the Lambs was the bomb diggity dot com. Oh my gosh psychological thriller there was still some horror like good horror elements it's also action it's psychological thriller like oh my gosh oh my gosh I want to I want to rewatch it tonight thank you very much now I have to actually make plans 
I have to do an honorable mention. This is a movie I never hear anyone talking about it and I'm starting to get a little bit self-conscious that I'm the only one who likes it and has seen it. That movie is Ice Cream Man from 1995 and directed by Paul Norman. Okay, so if you don't know, this is the story of this kid who... The backstory. Backstory is this kid who grows... Uh, who, like, witnesses a murder as a kid of his local ice cream man. And it completely traumatizes him. And he's, like, a little bit mentally unstable. So he grows up his whole life in a mental institute, basically. And the actual movie is starts when he's released from the institute and he like becomes an ice cream man. And we basically follow his story and how he's a little bit creepy, a little bit off, but maybe it's a little bit more than just weird socializing skills. And it's also a little bit like surrealist, the movie. Not all of it, but there's like moments in the second half, I would say, that are pretty... Moving on to 2000s recommendations. So the first one I want to mention, uh, I'm going to keep for last because it's the best. What was that for? I don't know. So the first movie from the 2000s that I want to recommend is Orphan from 2009, directed by Jamie Coulet... Hold on. Jaume Coulet Serra. So this one is basically a somewhat of a psychological thriller. I feel like the, you know, it gets a little right, right, towards the end. Um, but I really liked it. I haven't seen that many, like, good reviews about it. I feel like people don't really talk about this one too much, so I'm not even sure if it's because it's, like, people don't like it very much or because, I don't know. There's also a plot twist at the end, so I'm not sure how much of it to talk about, but um, it's basically about these two parents who adopt this orphan child to kind of fill the void of their, uh, I think it's a miscarriage or maybe their toddler died. I can't remember, one or the other. So they just wanted a child, so they ended up adopting and it gets creepy. Let's just put it that way. And I thought it was good. I really, really liked it. And I'd watch it again. The second one I want to recommend for the 2000s is going to be controversial. But that is going to be Paranormal Activity from 2007 and directed by Jen Pelly. I feel like people either love it or hate it. I mean, not love love, but like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm just here like, I feel like people have opinions about it that are different. I feel like not a lot of people like this one too much. Um, I'm not sure why. I mean, I could see why because, I mean, I definitely thought it was creepy. Like, I was kind of on my toes for the most part. Um, but I guess it is kind of like either really creepy or just very, very slow. Um, so in that regards, I kind of get it if you don't know it at all, which... I'm sure most people do at this point, but it's just like people experiencing paranormal activity in their homes, so they kind of like set up, you know, video cameras, home security cameras, just to keep an eye on what's going on, and you basically watch the movie through the camera, or the security cameras. I also wanted to mention that this is a franchise, and I don't know how many movies there are total. I've seen the first three I believe maybe I've seen the fourth one I can't really remember because I'm bad with stuff like that but I enjoyed most of them um I believe like most franchises the more you go the more it like declines in quality <laughs> sad but true for the most part um but no, the first one I really liked. And the last one I'm going to go with for 2000s, this one is quite literally one of two, maybe three movies that I've seen in my life that has literally made me crap my pants long term after having seen the movie. Like most movies I see, like horror movies I see, I'm just scared for the duration of the movie. This one I saw maybe like at least 10 years ago. 
I am still clenching my booty at thinking about it right now. I'm like, <laughs> I don't really want to talk about it, honestly. <laughs> um, one of the reasons why is because the first time I saw it, I watched it alone. The second time, I think I was with a friend, but I, um, I don't even know why I watched it a second time. I think I was like, you can do it so well. You're not going to grab your pants today. And that movie, raise your hand if you agree with me. I agree with myself. Um, is Juwan, aka The Grudge, from 2002, um, and directed by Takashi Shimizu. Needless to say, I have also not watched any Japanese horror since then. <laughs> is all Japanese horror this creepy? Oh my gosh! Whoa! Um, so if you don't know the plot of this one, basically the main character is this um, live-in caretaker. Her assignment is to go to this home and take care of this old lady, and that home is haunted by a spirit. And that's as much as I'm going to say about it, because that's as much as I want to get into it. <laughs> it's really freaking creepy, and that's the polite version. One thing that really can play with my nerves during movies not even just horror movies but like any any genre for me is the music like I really don't care about visuals for the most part but you can really play with my strings with the music and I think one thing that um Japanese non-American movie makers or like non-western world movie makers do wonderfully especially Japanese I'm gonna you know I'm saying Japanese just based on my experience with this movie is the use of silence oh my gosh the use of the silence and the grudge is just like we got the 2010s to go down because you know it was so long ago no one can remember what happened back then the first one I'm gonna mention is one of the other movies that has kept me scared post horror movie this one not as much I would say this one kind of like lingered for a little bit after having seen it but now I'm all good like it lingered for maybe a month or two you know what I mean and now I'm good, like, you know, so, and I watched it again with my friend, and she actually really, well, Melanie, I told you about Melanie, I watched it with her, and, um, this one's really creepy, because I think it kind of taps into things that we believe in, so, well, I'm gonna leave it at that, because I don't want to spark a debate or anything. That one is Insidious. Um, from 2010 and directed by James Wan. So when I watched it, when I sat down to watch it, I'm like, okay, it's gonna be like, an, uh, what's it called? Paranormal Activity. I've already seen Paranormal Activity. I know what to expect. I know what I'm in for. No, I know how I'm scared I'm gonna be, blah, 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 whatever. No. No. This one was really creepy. I would say the first, maybe... The first half of the movie, I would say, is not too, too creepy. It's a little bit nerve-wracking, we'll put it that way. But the end is like, or like, not the end. Yes, the end is very creepy. The, like, middle up until the end is, yeah, we'll put it that way. Okay, the next one I want to mention is Midsummer from 2019 and directed by Ari Aster. This one was just creepy. Like, I don't think this movie was explicitly, how can I explain it? You know when movie, you watch a movie like Nightmare on Elm Street or any other like most movies mentioned on this list and you're watching it and you're like, okay, this is a horror movie. This movie is like actively trying to creep me out. This movie felt like Hannibal Lecter was talking to you. Like it felt like it wasn't even trying to be creepy. Like it wasn't trying to pretend to be creepy. Like it just was. And it's more psychological 
thriller than horror. Maybe it's psychological horror. We'll put it that way. And I start watching it and I'm just like, you know what? This is like a little normal. I don't know. It was just like, okay, maybe we're in a hipster movie. Maybe we're like watching a Burning Man vlog or something. I don't know. Um, And then it just turns into this very like, you get pulled into the cult environment so slowly that it just feels very normal and then all of a sudden you're like whoa whoa this did that just happen is that what and i think it portrayed very well how people get randomly pulled into cults <laughs> like you know when you're like when people that are very very smart get pulled into cults without knowing they're being pulled into a cult because they're technically too smart to know that or like too smart to be trapped in a cult or anything and then all of a sudden you're like oh my gosh I'm already in it's too late whoa that was midsummer totally recommend all psychological minus this one gory scene I would say and it also has the weirdest sex scene ever oh my gosh the last one I want to mention is Cabin in the Woods from 2011 by Drew Goddard and that is um a really weird movie that one I feel like is a combination of a, like multiple different genres or like sub genres of horror it was kind of weird it was like mid like stuck in the middle of nowhere horror it was somewhat cozy in the beginning and then it turned to like sci-fi ish it was a weird combination but it really worked it's basically these like a group of teenage or like young adults I keep saying teenagers young adults whatever who decide to go to this cabin in the woods um probably on spring break or something I can't remember off the top of my head and they basically go to this cabin in the woods and like weird creatures start attacking them one by one and they get killed off until there's two left obviously maybe three and so they kind of explore and they realize that there's some weird stuff going on in that forest that I'm not gonna say anymore because I don't want to spoil anything let me know in the comments all of your thoughts like this video if you did subscribe to the channel to see the rest of the series and my little story time and pumpkin carving for Halloween I'll see you guys next time bye